Hey guys, Dean here. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing the new TARDIS mod for Minecraft. It's basically a Forge mod which allows players to experience playing in the TARDIS time machine from Doctor Who. If you like Doctor Who as a TV show and you're a huge fan, this is the mod for you. Let's check it out. Okay, so as we explore this mod, you can see we have quite a few categories here. But before we get into this mod, it's basically a mod created by Lilith, Mother of All, and their friends who basically develop and maintain this mod. It's basically focused on the TARDIS itself and centered around you as the player performing as the Doctor. This is not actually a general Doctor Who mod though, guys. This mainly focuses around the TARDIS itself and the theme and elements and features of it, rather than adding the whole blanket features from the Doctor Who universe. There are obviously other mods like that, such as the Dalek mod. So let's jump into the game. You can expect this to basically be a mod which prioritizes a more satisfying gameplay experience rather than being accurate to the show itself. So you may encounter a few nuances and changes, but for the most part, this is a really great mod. So let's jump into it. So when we jump into the TARDIS mod, we have a few different tabs, okay? We have a few different items, blocks from the future, and things which will be related to the TARDIS's interior. The maintenance of the TARDIS and the ship itself, and also the main TARDIS mod features and items such as the sonic screwdrivers and different gadgets from the show. So the lore of the mod itself is actually based on an original story from the mod's main artist. This was based on the plotline of the first Doc 2 series of the reboot in 2005, and uses this material to focus what it's actually based off, which is pretty cool. Original material and also the official show material. Now to view information on the mod, there's a few different ways that we can do this. The first obviously being the official wiki page of the mod which covers most of the features, including some topics which we can't find in the item I'm going to show you. And the wiki is really good basically for tutorial based content and for extra detail. But if you want to find information related to the new TARDIS mod in game, you do have access to this item, which is just called the manual. So this is basically a book with a table of contents in it, which describes the mod. Inside here, it shows specific TARDIS information that tries to focus around the actual lore of the mod itself. So we have the table of contents here, which shows the different chapters and we can go through the different features of the time machine such as the emotions and how it reacts, the subsystems, the upgrades, the flight system and modes and controls, the security, the protocols, environmental systems and so many different things which describe the actual mod and its features. We can have a look at the schematics, the time ship energy, the item attunement and the structures which are actually inside the mod itself. There's a lot of rich and important information which you need to read if you're brand new to the mod. Now one really cool structure I just want to show you is the Dalek ship itself, which you can locate around the world floating in the sky. And let me say that the artist has done an absolutely fabulous job on these models. Just take a few close-up looks and shots of these Daleks themselves, which come in many different shapes, sizes, and colors. And the models have some real good attention to detail and flashing lights and elements on them. I really like how much time they've put into these models and how well-crafted they are, and they look really nice. Having created my own TARDIS model for one of my mods, I can really appreciate how these look. So let's go into the Dalek spaceship itself, which hovers above in the sky. This is exactly what it looks like from the outside, but when we take a look on top, you can see the mobs and the redstone pieces and different items and blocks which adorn the top of its decoration. You'll see all these electronics and levers and different pieces which decorate the top when you inspect it close up. Of course, we can pull these levers and press them, although mostly they're for show. And this place is obviously littered with Daleks because it's a Dalek ship, so what would you expect? Damn, that looks really cool with the sun as the background. And I have to say, blue's my favorite color so this blue dalek is definitely my favorite and this is a close-up of what the underside of the ship looks like and what you can expect from the viewpoint of the bottom now i'm going to cheat and take a shortcut and break into the actual ship itself to show you what it looks like inside so this is the inside interior obviously there's an equal amount of daleks on the inside than what we saw on the outside this looks really cool and there's a lot of different custom textured blocks inside as well as some flashing gears and machinery that i have no clue what they are but it looks cool, right? And behind the stained glass is some doors which lead to rooms probably of questionable origin and interiors, which are guarded by the many Daleks which are inside its hallways. And obviously, if we just walk on these pressure plates, we can open up these doors. And there's a few different things here, right? Future space tech, no surprise here. So let's just take a look around. Obviously, we can open up these grates and we can look at these Daleks, which don't attack me because I'm in creative mode. Something which I'm definitely not going to change for the time being. There's also ship computers, which actually have 
items inside their inventory and many different rooms which we can access, okay? Now, I'm just going to break this glass, which I shouldn't do, just to show you a few of the rooms which this ship houses. This looks like something out of the Tantive 4, some kind of prison room where Princess Leia would be hidden, but when you explore a little bit deeper, it definitely doesn't disappoint. I really like the interior design and building of these structures, and they're definitely something to aspire to explore. Now, I'm not sure how you'd actually get into the sky to reach one of these, but when you do, you can expect a good amount of loot inside here. Randomized loot tables of things like Crying Obsidian, Enchanted Diamond Armor with enchants on it, and actually fairly decent weapons. Although, I'd probably presume you'd have at least diamond if you're exploring one of these ships. Now, Daleks don't just sit on the ground, though. We have flying Daleks in stasis in midair with these boosters, which are actually propelling them in the sky. And there's definitely no shortage of these guys sitting in this room. This is one of the main rooms of the ship, and it's a really nice place to view the diversity of the different Daleks. Although it's very easy to stumble into many of them. So this is kind of a quick overview of one of the main structures, the Dalek ship, which you can find hovering over in the overworld. Now, let's leave this TARDIS ship and let's get on to how to get started in the mod. The way to get started is we don't actually build a TARDIS or spawn one. We have to actually find one. Weird, right? Well, okay, let me explain. So for newer versions of this mod post 1.14.4, you do have to actually find broken, damaged, lost TARDISes, which are unclaimed, which we can find in the underground. So let's go look for one. So let's talk about where we can actually find the broken down TARDIS exterior, which will echo around it. So we have to go underground under the Y level of 64, below Y level 32 in 1.16.5, which I'm actually in right now. This can be found in all biomes, except the nether and end dimensions. And there's no real spawn chance, but it has to be set in the following conditions. So there has to be two vertically stacked blocks of air around it and the blocks should not be able to see the sky. There's a few ways to actually locate this. So you can right click a Minecraft bell for long distance searches and it will basically vibrate with an echoing cluster sound, which means that there may be a broken TARDIS nearby within a three chunk radius around the bell. This basically serves as an indication that the time ships that respond to the bell being mirrored with a sound indicates that they're in impending danger. Basically, just in simple terms, it means there's one nearby. And you can also use this pocket watch too for less longer distance radius searches. So basically, this detects the TARDIS as two and you have to hold it in any hand. So this can go in your main hand or your off hand and basically as you explore the world the watch hands may go haywire within a 25 block radius of the TARDISes themselves. Now the easiest way is just to go to a villager which is the storyteller villagers which you can find in observatory structures in villagers. With one of the unlockable trades we can find this item which is the artifact map which shows you the exact location of a nearby broken TARDIS or a crashed spaceship if they are in loaded chunks already. So let's just right click on this item and it gives me a, a real simple map to follow right so as you can see we have a player direction over here now the downside about this one is i don't know which direction my actual player is going in so i'm not sure which way we're actually moving but as you can see now i seem to be moving in the right direction and you can see there seems to be a crash spaceship in this direction so i'm moving the right way that way so there's one around here somewhere right i'm in the right position horizontally if i go this way it doesn't move the thing okay it's exploring further so I think I'm heading in the right direction. Here we go. Perfect. So now if we look at the map, X marks the spot, which would usually be Minecraft treasure, right? It marks it as being here. So underground here somewhere, we should have our broken TARDIS or crash spaceship. Now I have to actually be careful because I'm actually in creative mode. So I could actually break this thing, but you can already see underground over there, down here, we have our broken down TARDIS. So let's go ahead. So this is what it looks like underground when you find it, typically in a dark cave, and it'll have these strobing flashing green lights. So we're in creative mode now, and you can see these TARDISes, each of them have a unique emotional personality. So they exhibit different emotions when you interact with them. And these are basically vulnerable because they've crashed and they kind of have a trust process in people interacting with them, right? Because it's basically like a wounded entity. So basically we have these sparks and pulsating glowing and the fire particles coming off it. So we can't actually enter it, okay? We can't actually utilize it. Basically, we need to convince this thing to actually open itself up to us. We need to appeal to this by gifting this TARDIS items. Seems 
a weird ride. You're just a casual fan of the show. But this is actually a pretty cool process. It's almost like taming a pet. So the easiest way, perhaps, is by gifting it items. Basically, items which are related to exploration and adventure, which is obviously what the TARDIS is all about. So I'm just going to illuminate this area so you can actually get a good look of it. And I'm going to showcase some items we can give to it, right? So basically, you hold these items and then you just give it to the TARDIS by going right up to it with the item. So let me show you some items you can use. Now, first of all, you can use a map, but it has to be a filled map, which has already been explored. So we can't use a map which we spawn in creative. We could also use ender pearls, which is a pretty good gift. And we can also use ender eyes. As well as this, we can use bells, which we originally used to search for it. And you can use clocks, I believe just the normal vanilla Minecraft clock. And also the compass, the standard Minecraft compass. So if we go ahead, we walk up to this thing and we right click on it, it has these love hearts, right? So the more we do this, we're basically taming it by giving it items. And now you can see it's opened itself up and you can see a visual representation of the bigger on the inside look through this door. Almost like the case with the dimensional doors or the nether portals mod where you can see on the other side without it preloading. So now we can open the door and we can close it and we can just go ahead and walk straight inside and it joins the world and enters us directly into the new TARDIS. And this place already looks beautiful, so let's explore. We have notes on the floor, which is pretty cool decoration. We have all these futuristic blocks, but also this wooden adornment and metal style interior to it. This is a really unique structure with these warped roots and crimson roots. And as you can see, it's a really unique interior. Obviously each TARDIS is unique and I'm sure each of them will have different insides to them, which is what makes this mod really cool. And obviously we have chairs over here that we can actually sit on, interactable entities and blocks. We have a fireplace over here. It's almost like a classical house, which you'd expect from the Victorian times, upgraded with future tech. Namely, obviously the center computer, which I'm gonna showcase in a minute. But obviously this has different rooms and it also has multi floors to this structure. It's basically like a structure with this root going all the way down to the other floor. So this is pretty cool. It's an explorable structure with multiple parts to it. Now, I'm sure the main part which you guys are concerned about though is the central computer. So if we go to the center, we have this main computer which you may have seen in the thumbnail, which we can interact with. There's so many different parts to this computer that you can interact with. I'm going to have to show you how to actually use this. This is the central console. Now, one thing I failed to mention when I basically walked into the TARDIS is there is actually a way to force entry into it with without bending it to your will by kind of taking advantage of it by just bribing it with gifts, you can actually use a lead with a horse, okay? So if you have a horse, like a pet horse, and you put a lead on it, you can right click the lead onto the broken TARDIS's exterior and basically force yourself in. But this has negative consequences, it hates you, and it's not gonna land accurately at your destination. So this is kind of like a fruitless endeavor, so I really wouldn't recommend choosing that route when playing the mod. Now next we're gonna go on to preparing for flight. So we have to craft and install certain subsystems. To allow the TARDIS to fly at its minimum capacity, we have to craft and install essential subsystems into it. As you can see, there's some pretty cool screens over here which offer us visual representation to the behavior of the TARDIS and what it's actually doing and the functions it's basically exhibiting in the current moment. So a few things which we have to mention. And let's go over these upgrades and subsystems. So the first one is the dematerialization circuit. Then we have the fluid link. Then we also have the Artron capacitors which come in different forms. And we also have batteries as well. Now we could use basic or we could use creative. Now I'm going to use the high capacitors and the creative battery. As you can see if you press control or left shift in this mod we can view more information. So we can see this is a subsystem which is required for flight and it requires repairing. It also shows the engine installation location which is components and it shows the issues for flight. So these are all components which need to be installed and capacitors show the total capacity of the energy and their recharge multipliers. So this is useful information when looking at all these mods. Basically Basically, dematerialization circuit and fluid link are needed and mandatory for flight, but the fluid link and the capacitors are needed to basically refuel the systems of the TARDIS. We have to install these into the components, right? Now, to install these subsystems, which we've been mentioning, we first need to locate the TARDIS's engine. This basically appears as a blue block, which lets us maintain, upgrade, and monitor the performance of the actual system. Now, this is the TARDIS engine itself, right? So, as you can see, when we right-click this, we can access the components panel. Now, you can view this TARDIS engine on the bottom floor of the TARDIS, but the interior really is based on the variant which you receive. So we can basically drag in the components and click on them to install them over here. Now you can see we have to connect the wires here to the ones which 
match in order to set this component up and make it function correctly. So we've installed the first component, which is the dematerialization circuit, and now we can get on to adding the fluid link, which works below. I really like this interactive element system where you basically attach these wires. It's very similar to the mini game in Among Us, and it's really cool because it's almost like you're doing tasks on the ship. It's like I'm playing Among Us to install these parts. It's actually really cool. Now, as you can see, there's certain components which don't fit in here because they're not meant for it. But if we go through, we can add other components. Now we can add additional components later to upgrade them into here, but for now, it seems to be good for the the mandatory features which we need. Now let's move on to refueling the TARDIS itself because once we have these essential subsystems installed we basically need to refuel it. So we have the fuel link which we've just installed right and it should be activated because we've just attached the wires. We also need to have an Artron capacitor inside of the Artron panel side of the TARDIS engine. Now as you can see we have a leaky capacitor here and we can jump in and we can install the capacitor into this particular block. So we're going to attach the wires again, install this over here and now we have installed this capacitor. So now we have the fluid link over here and then on this side we have the capacitor. So each side of this block interface is actually a different block. This is actually a multi-block interface. So one side is for charging and attunement, one side is for upgrades, one side is for the power banks and one side is for components. So this might be confusing for you when you first take a look at the mod. And obviously we need to have a look at the Artron banks side to install this which I just showed you how to do. Now we also need to use the refueler control which is located in the TARDIS console which is actually above us in the base so we'll just take the staircase back up and I'll show you where that is so here we have the TARDIS console and we need to use the refueler control the refueler is basically a button which allows you to toggle refueling of the TARDIS's tanks and if you need to fly for a period of time it's basically a necessity and the amount of fuel which we use for each different trip will of course vary but it's recommended to refuel it every time we have a flight so basically if we're going hundreds of blocks in the same direction or traveling to a different dimension we'll need more fuel so you just basically click on the button simply and it starts the refueling state and it'll show us the message when we do so as you can see what's really cool is these particles too which come below from the engine which come through this exhaust grate in here we'll also put these artron batteries inside this charging area and i'm just going to duplicate these all because these are creative mode now as you can see one thing which you're going to overlook is this red switch on the bottom of the gui interface in components Basically, this enables the components which you've installed after you've activated them. If you don't flick these on, you're not actually going to be able to use them. This is also required for the fluid link because if you don't activate it, it simply just can't charge. So go around, click on all the install components and actually make sure they're doing something because if you've installed them and overlooked this, then they're not going to be performing as they should do. Now, in certain sections of the UI, like the Artron banks, you don't need to do this and certain things you do not need to activate. But for the components, this is paramount otherwise they're simply just not going to work and now certain components might actually change color and we can press this button for the refueling protocols this basically engages the ship to refuel itself and allows us to actually get charging the console itself so we can move the TARDIS so now I've showed you how to refuel the TARDIS and set up the core components so let's move on to the console itself which sits snug by here which shows some pretty useful information about the journey the target the dimension you're currently in and the location but when we click on it we have so many different options but one thing to point out is it says unknown on the screen right so how do we fix that okay let's take a look so basically the navigation screen reads unknown so it needs fixing because we can't initially travel to any other dimensions either basically we have to craft an item this item is called the navcom and basically this allows us to fix this so if we read this this is a subsystem component which we don't need for flying we install it into the component section of the ship if we want to repair it it basically allows the TARDIS to set its destination position which is important and it means that we won't have these randomized unknown coordinates. So let's go ahead and activate this just like we did with the previous components, which I showed you how to do. So for this, we just go to our components section where we installed our features before, and we will basically just click on the appropriate position. And then we'll connect all these just like we did in the previous mini game and we'll install it. And remember to activate it so it actually works. That's one thing which you may forget when installing all new components. Okay, now, so one thing you'll realize when we install this is we now have location coordinates which are fixed. It shows us the dimension, 
are facing point in relation to what a compass reads and a lot of useful information like the Artron units of the ship which is now charging. Remember we basically want to charge the ship so it has at least 10 Artron units before we begin traveling. Now it's over 100 which means we have appropriate charge to start moving so we're making some headway in the mod. Basically this whole TARDIS is a living entity right so once we've basically gained its trust we have to keep that trust. To interact with it we have to basically make sure they still trust us otherwise we're not going to be able to use it in the way that we want to. Keeping this loyalty and trust from the TARDIS and maintaining that basically allows us for our traveling lands to be more accurate so we don't just appear in the wrong place. So let's go over some more subsystems before we actually travel and showcase some more parts of the mod because there's still upgrades to be made and more subsystems to be installed. So here we have four different resources which we can gather and use as subsystems to increase the range of abilities that our TARDIS will utilize. So first we have the interstitial antenna. This is basically a subsystem component which allows the detection of distress signals from other players. It lets us detect crashed ships that contain scrap metals that we can also collect. Then we have the chameleon circuit which allows us to change the exterior of our spaceship. So this lets us disguise the exterior as other structures in the world like trees or cacti and give it that camouflage look and also customize the outside of it with different models to change its appearance. Then we have the shield generator okay. So this prevents other subsystems from taking damage when the exterior is hit. So when we're in space it also prevents us from being sucked out when the door actually opens. This is super useful because you don't want that to happen. Then we also have the temporal grace. This basically negates any kind of damage that you take inside the TARDIS when you pilot it so you don't take any damage from being hurt. So this also means that entities don't die when they take void damage if they also fall below the bottom of the TARDIS's interior dimension. Super important components that we're going to need to go install right now. We don't want any weaknesses in this thing. So let's go ahead and let's install our components. Now I'm going to skip ahead because you know how to install these, but I will first show you each slot that they go into. And as you can see, we've installed all these components, but there is still one slot from a component we haven't installed. But remember, when we install things, tick the red switch to activate them, otherwise they're just going to be useless and not perform the task that we need them to. Remember, there's also an upgrades panel, which you don't want to neglect. This extends the abilities of the installed subsystems that we've already installed and helps to expand what they can actually do. Most of these upgrades are in the ship maintenance tab, if you want to have a look. We can see we have atrium upgrade, which has been disabled, but we also have a few different upgrades which I'm going to go over here. So first we have the Electro Convert upgrade. Now there's required dependencies for each of these upgrades because obviously they upgrade the individual subsystems which are required before you install them. So as you can see we have the Key Fob upgrade, we have the Electric Convert upgrade. So the first one allows entities within a 16 block radius around the exterior to breathe underwater when we are submerged in the exterior. The Key Fob allows us to lock the TARDIS doors using the key from a distance like an electronic key which we can sensor just like you would with a car. And this structure upgrade allows the telepathic circuits to locate valid structures within a certain radius of the destination's coordinates. The time link upgrade also allows us to tow another TARDIS using our own, just like a pickup truck style. With the zero room upgrade, it removes poisonous effects and heals the players under their max health. So these are cool things and abilities which just kind of extend the capabilities of our ships. So you can just go ahead and put them in any slot and we wire them the exact same. And as I keep advising you, don't forget to press those switches if you want them to work. But as you can see, as I install these upgrades, they automatically enable themselves and these switches are just going red anyway. Now we've installed all of our upgrades, which is going to be super useful. Now we need to maintain the TARDIS, okay? This is important and the way that we do this is we have to keep a stock of raw materials that we can use on hand when it's urgent that the subsystems need repairing, okay? Because if we want to keep using this thing, it needs to be maintained. Just like a pet needs to be tended to and rare possessions that are valuable to you in real life need to be cleaned and maintained to basically keep the performance or keep the value. So a plant farm would be useful, which allows us to maintain a supply of circuit paste over here, which is for ship maintenance, which we use to create exotronic circuits. Also, cinnabar is also another material which we need to repair fluid links via these items, which are mercury bottles. Xeon crystals are also really useful. These can be found underground and we can craft useful items with these. Let's talk about the interior. Now, if we want to extend the interior of the TARDIS beyond just the 
console room layout, we can craft what's called an Ars Tabla. This is an item over here, which you can see. It basically allows for room creation. And we click on a corridor spawn block to enable this item and use it. And we can also remove it too. So this is useful. This is an item which basically extends the size of the TARDIS, okay? Because the TARDIS is basically its own dimension. And you would have to find a specialized block, which appears on the walls over here, and we would use this on the item. So basically the corridor spawn allows for rooms to be created using this Ars Tabla. And basically we have to select a structure. We select which structure we want to generate on the interface. And I'm just going to select room. And then just let's just click on hydroponics farm because I mentioned that we need that to be created for certain resources. It just matches the theme, right? And then once we've selected that in the interface of the tablet, we right click on the corridor spawn block and then we can assign that new room in here. And now we have a hydroponic farm inside. And it's also spawned more of these spawns. So then we can also assign different rooms. So we could go in here and press room and then press next. And we could also get a machinery workshop and spawn that here and vice versa. And we can continuously extend this huge interior of our TARDIS with so many useful rooms for different purposes. And that's how to extend the interior of your TARDIS and customize it to your own will. And then of course we can change the theme and layout later, which will make it look different, but retain all the different rooms we've created as well. That is for expanding rooms. So if we want to just redecorate this console room, we'd actually just go over here inside this interface from the console and we change the interior, right? And from here we can change the interior to different things. Now currently we can only change it from abandoned steam interior, which which is what we start off with to a little bit more of an upgrade to the steam interior. So we'll press select because this is our only other option. It will give you a warning that any existing bed positions, paintings or placed custom blocks will be removed. Waypoints will be saved inside and basically we're just going to press confirm, right? And then it starts and begins the process. Now you have to actually exit this thing before this starts, okay? So I'm going to go ahead, quickly exit, open this door and then the process will begin and the TARDIS will reform the interior. And basically it says completed in the chat and then that means that we can go back inside and now we should have a little bit of a fresher look. This is a lot cleaner than before because we have all those vines and horrible plants removed and it's just a more visually pleasing look. And we still have our extended rooms which we added before, so they've been kept alongside our modifications. It's just a lot nicer to look at. So let's go over a few different things we missed earlier from the subsystem section. So one thing that's useful to mention, which I forgot to mention, is the subsystem upgrades can actually be upgraded in Anvil. This kind of seems a little bit meaningless, but you can actually upgrade them with different enchantments. So for an example, we spawn an anvil, we can go inside and we can actually enchant dematerialization circuits with unbreaking three for an example. And then we can also enchant the fluid link just as an example with mending. So we now have enchanted subsystem items, but you do need to take them outside of the engine during flight or the TARDIS will crash land and damage the other components. So this is really important. Now the next section is important and that's recovering our TARDIS if we've forgotten the location. So we're going to leave the TARDIS itself. Let's just say that we forgot where this was located located, right? And we had no clue how to locate it. Well, there's a few different methods. Now, a useful, simple way to do it without just leaving the TARDIS is just to spawn a bed within the TARDIS. Because remember, the bed sets the respawn point inside a world or the so-called respawn anchor. And we can do this within the TARDIS dimension itself. So I can just right click and set my spawn point, And then if we die, we'll just be teleported back inside the TARDIS interior. You probably didn't think it was that easy, but it actually is. We can also spawn this tool or obviously create it in survival mode and it's a diagnostics tool which is held in the hand and basically you look around with it until you hear a beeping noise which lets you locate the time ship itself or a console basically we have to hover over the console block to view system dashboard information with it so let's go inside and like i said this is the diagnostics tool if we right click on it we can take a look at the forge energy buffer the artron uses the time ship location which shows at the zero coordinates because i've not bind it to a ship we can go into the subsystems which would show the stats of the install subsystem systems. Okay, so basically we'd have to link this to the system itself, right? The diagnostics tool. So what we do is we'd go into the charging panel, which is located on one of the sides here, and we'd basically put this item in here to charge, and this would attune it with the ship, okay? And there would be a progress bar here, which would charge it itself. Basically, we have to initiate the takeoff sequence in the TARDIS, though, to actually bind this item to the TARDIS itself. So you'd have to set the coordinates and actually begin flight. And as you can see, we now have the TARDIS moving. 
and we have a few errors of vortex scrap for an example but the TARDIS is moving right so we've basically put it into motion so let's go downstairs and now you can see there is actually a charging progress over here which is now reaching the 100% mark and it says tracking time ship Valans patrol ship 3 so this is now binded to the ship so we've now bound it and when we use the diagnostics tool it actually has the real information regarding our ship itself its location and it shows the real vitals of all of our subsystems so that's how to bind this to our ship now when we're outside of the time ship we can actually now locate it using the diagnostics tool and view all the information which is crucial so this is a pretty cool tool which is important to link early on now it's exactly the same with the back door item this allows for emergency access to a linked time ship so we can use this to directly teleport inside the TARDIS interior so we charge it in the same manner as the last item and we just throw it in here and basically there's a progress bar which is going to move a lot slower this time right so we're gonna have to wait a long time for this but this will allow us to teleport directly now it's really recommended to store this item and link it because you're really going to need this at some points if you mess up and also storing multiple of these items which are attuned to your ship can actually be really useful too so here is the tardis control panel okay and it can be a little bit confusing because there's so many controls here each console unit i.e the different styles that you can change have different layouts for the controls this is where the tardis manual actually comes into place so our manual item we had before we can go ahead and put the item inside a hand and this is what you're going to need okay because there's no information about the different colored buttons online unless you're watching a long video like this so the best way to quickly key which button does what is get the manual and hover over the buttons and it'll show you exactly what this button does that you're hovering over. So this is the refuel button, which we learned earlier. And then we have these different buttons, right? So here we have the communicator. This basically allows distress signals to be intercepted by the TARDIS, which is sent by players or other means. Then we have the coordinate XYZ increment modifier. This is just the increments of the XYZ plotters for the location. Then there's also the vertical land type here, which we adjust the landing type vertically of the ship itself the telepathic circuits basically allows your ship to locate nearby biomes structures and objects with a 500 block radius now just like with a car the handbrake basically is a lever to toggle the ability of the TARDIS to remain in its current position with a car when you pull up the handbrake the car will roll back or roll forwards right and it'll allow you to get moving because that would basically keep the car in stasis as it's pushed down so you'd have to pull it up this is the same with the TARDIS and it prevents the TARDIS taking off if it's in in a negative state so you need to put it into positive and flick it on to basically be able to launch and move the dimensional shifters basically lets you control where the destination dimension is so will we basically go to the end will we go to the nether or will we go to a completely custom dimension added by a mod that we're running alongside the new tardis mod there's a lot of cool integrations which this can have with other mods so this is a really cool setting now this is the randomizer this basically lets you randomize coordinates within 5,000 blocks of the current dimension so it can take you just to a completely different place which you don't even know that you're going to. This door switch basically allows you to open, close, unlock, and lock the TARDIS doors. If you wonder what the sonic port's for, it basically lets you use a sonic device, such as the sonic screwdriver, to receive or provide information about the ship. It also lets you unlock different schematics, which basically includes interiors, exteriors, or consoles for the TARDIS ship. And the stabilizers toggle the flight mode between unstabilized and stabilized flight. Now, during going through a time vortex, this controls the flight speed the throttle which affects the time of duration when we're actually flying and also lets us exit flight mode safely if we're already on an ongoing journey so those are the basic features and buttons of the console itself and what it actually does within your TARDIS. So we have the standard flight mode when we're moving in the new TARDIS mod, which is stabilized flight. And this is the default, which doesn't really require any input from us during the process. So we don't really need to control it. And it lets the TARDIS automatically take off and land. But unstabilized flight, which is much faster, which obviously we use the component, which I mentioned before to do this, is more of a risky form of flight. And it basically allows us to fly twice as fast as our usual speed for half of the fuel usage in comparison to the normal flight mode. The ship is more mood varied during this. You have to respond to potential flight hazards which might come up along the way. And you have three to 10 seconds to respond, otherwise you may get problems, okay? If you fail to press the correct controls, the time ship, aka your TARDIS, will suffer damage to all the subsystems which we installed, which then require repairs, which is what we talked about earlier. Not fun. Also in this mode, you have to manually land the TARDIS. So if you have no clue what you're doing, which means you have to set the throttle speed to zero, 
when you reach the destination, I wouldn't recommend trying this. You need to be quick to respond and also kind of know what all the controls are without looking at them with a the manual. Then the third mode is also Vortex Limbo. So this is a travel mode which lets you stay in flight when you've already reached your destination. So it lets you redirect the TARDIS if you suddenly need to go or give yourself some more time to prepare for what you're going to face after you leave the TARDIS itself. You basically first fly in unstabilized mode but not throttle when you reach the destination to activate this and it can basically be during a long period of time but the subsystems and fuel will continuously be used up whilst it's in vortex limbo mode. So if you want to break your components and use up all the fuel it's a good idea to stay in this for a long time but I definitely wouldn't recommend it. Now during unstable flight mode there is obviously flight hazards one which you saw earlier which was vortex scrap and basically things like this what's happening right now such as time winds will approach and you have to basically react to them in time if you don't want to damage your ship you can also set distress signals to different time ships too to help you which is usually other players as you can see it's throwing me around right now these hazards are basically just quick time events that you need to act fast with in order to avoid damage to the ship and potentially bigger problems. So let's now gloss over the monitor protocols of the TARDIS monitor. This has a lot of functions which we can't access on the standard console unit. So we have a lot of protocol information here, right? So the time ship flight information shows us basically a copy of the text from the monitor block, okay, which is rendered on it. So this is the information we already get just by looking at the block, but we can also just access it in the interface. Changing the interior I've showed you before basically allows us to change how the ship looks. We can also change the console unit, okay? And currently we only have the default. We can also change the exterior, which is important. This is kind of cool because we already have a few more options off the bat. By default, it's on the steampunk mode because this is what the abandoned time ship looked like. But we can change it to a capsule, a special shell. I'm just gonna select this capsule and just select that and it changes how it looks and this obviously needs that chameleon circuit subsystem which we installed earlier in the control panel then we have the security sub menu on here so the alarm protocol basically toggles the alarm of the ship so the light flashes and this is basically for maybe when a hostile entity like a mob enters the ship and it pulsates with this red warning light and basically plays a sound right so we're gonna go ahead and toggle that off because that can get a little bit annoying then we have scan for life signs so this just counts all of the different players and mobs inside so if we have a player who just somehow gets in and just hides with like a diamond sword this can kind of scan if other people are in which is kind of spooky right kind of like ghosts and then the force field basically toggles the exterior force field so this protects people inside from being sucked out into the zero air environments like the moon or space if you travel there but it doesn't shield you from damage around the exterior or prevent players being sucked out when the interior door is open during flight mode so those are still very big risks that apparently amount to tend to then we also have interior properties so we can change the flight sound schemes so this basically adjusts the in-flight takeoff flight loop and landing sounds and we can kind of change these over here we can change the console variant over here which changes what it looks like the skin so now it's like a whole iron skin which looks really cool we can also change it to rosewood so we can change the skin of the console from this interior menu and then the interior home is obviously the sounds which we can change to different themes and the exterior properties over here this is basically for exterior options the target so the landing code is the landing code to allow it to land within the range of transduction barriers that have a matching code. That might not make sense when you start off the mod. Then we have the exterior animation, which is the animation which is used for the takeoff and landing. So we can change this from classic to the new Doctor Who. And the anti-gravity protocol. So we can activate this and deactivate it. It allows the TARDIS's exterior to not be affected by gravity when it's active. And it drains the units of power, those Artron units, from those banks being installed earlier so it's recommended to keep this off unless you specifically need it on. Now one thing I talked about earlier was the mood and loyalty of the TARDIS. The fact that this whole thing is actually a living entity is kind of surprising and confusing for people. Well you have to maintain that in the mod in the newer versions and this is because if the TARDIS is upset or if you do something it's not going to land in the right place. It's going to land near hazards like lava or open doors mid-flight which could just throw you out of the thing and it'll drop you through a time vortex. Things which you probably will not not want to happen because you'll probably die 
okay? So that's important. To find the mood of the TARDIS, you have to look at the lighting. So if it takes on like a cold and lifeless shade of blue, this basically means that it's scheming to plot against you or it's depressed in some way, right? But if there's a fiery orange or brighter red color, this means that things are going well. These are important to look out for. This color difference is observed through the console, right? So you have to check the console itself to actually measure how things are going. Now to increase the mood, you basically just have to fly to different places. So flying in the more risky, unstabilized flight mode basically increases the TARDIS's mood, which is a good thing, right? But it also requires more control and reaction times because you have to manually fly the thing. So it's a bit more exhilarating and a bit harder and prone to hazards and ship damage, but it increases the TARDIS's mood. So who knew that the TARDIS was a dangerous driver or like dangerous drivers? It's just like women who like men who drive cars at super fast speed. They're a rare breed, but but they're also kind of psycho and that's what the TARDIS is like apparently. So that's how to increase the TARDIS's mood. Next up is the TARDIS's loyalty system, right? So this is how it also behaves towards you. So this affects long-term behavior. So if you're about to die, the TARDIS might save you, but if it doesn't like you, it's just gonna throw you away in hazards. Now you can't actually find out the loyalty of the TARDIS, okay? Basically, if your TARDIS is loyal to you, it won't try and kill you randomly. It won't try and strand you in a hostile place or land you in a horrible place. And it will basically allow you to generate the corridors and rooms, which I showed you earlier, without intervening prevention and it'll save you if your health falls below a certain amount of damage or value when you're inside the TARDIS. So it basically is going to protect you and be good to you. So try to fly without mistakes, try not to damage the subsystems and basically try to not abuse the whole system and you'll be mostly fine. So a TARDIS's personality has multiple traits, right? And each TARDIS acquired by a player only has one personality. It's basically a living being. Each personality is made up of three traits and if two of them are incompatible, only one will be added. And these are murderous or peaceful traits. So basically the TARDIS traits defines the conditions for how your TARDIS will gain and lose mood and loyalty. So it affects those two big factors we were talking about, right? So each of the traits have a weight system, which is a number generated between 0 and 1, which determines how much the trait affects the TARDIS. So a peaceful trait with a low weight will have a smaller impact on the TARDIS's mood and loyalty, while the same trait with a higher weight will change the mood and loyalty more significantly when it was placed in the same scenario. So the murderous trait, the TARDIS gains 5 to 10 mood and 1 to 3 loyalty every time you murder players or villagers. Peaceful, TARDISes lose 7 to 14 mood and 3 to 6 loyalty for every living being killed. Of course, minus aggressive players. The wet trait, TARDISes gain 1 mood for every 2 to 10 seconds underwater. Pyro gains 5 mood for every 20 seconds and a chance of gaining an additional 30% if there is lava within a 16 block radius of the TARDIS's exterior. The cold blooded trait means that if the TARDIS's exterior is in a snowy or cold biome, 0.05 mood every second with a chance to lose 20% more. The arachnophobic TARDISes lose 1 to 4 mood every 10 seconds that a spider is nearby. The jealous trait is if you fly another TARDIS, your TARDIS will will lose 1 to 5 loyalty and 1 to 4 mood every 10 seconds. So if you're inside another TARDIS that you own, this TARDIS also gains 10 mood every 10 seconds. So the new TARDIS benefits, but the old one basically detriments. The claustrophobic trait, there's a fear of enclosed spaces, so it loses 1 or more mood every 10 seconds. And if there's a solid block above the exterior, then this is the case. As for agoraphobic, this is a trait of the fear of open spaces. So it loses one or more mood every 10 seconds that there's no kind of solid block above the exterior of the TARDIS. So these are really random traits and there's a really random set of features in the mod which makes the new TARDIS mod unique. It kind of makes things more interesting that you kind of need to actually maintain the system itself. So let's move on to the last section of the new TARDIS mod showcase because this has been a super long winded one but I really wanted to pack this full of extra information for you guys. So let's move on to unlocking the extra content. Now we can unlock the interiors, the console rooms, the exterior looks, and the console unit appearances. I didn't describe why we only had a few earlier, because I wanted to have a full feature on it. Now, schematics are what we use to unlock these features. These are basically blueprints which have information in them, which allows us to have these unlockables. And it's stored inside sonic screwdrivers, or it can be stored inside them. These guys over here, which I haven't actually showcased in this video, as well as this squareness gun, which basically allows for destroying blocks and also restoring them, which is a pretty cool gadget too. So the Sonic Screwdriver targets a valid entity or block and it can change modes and interact with them, okay? And shift right clicking them allows you to change block interactions, change entity interactions, 
TARDIS coordinates and passive probe note. And we obviously would bind this to a TARDIS, I believe, just like the other tools I showed earlier. Unlocking schematics is basically a process and we use items for it. So we use what's called a neutronic spectrometer. Okay, so if we spawn this over here, it has its own interface, right? We basically use an item in this and it basically allows us to unlock things. So for an example, it shows us examples here. We can put prismarine in it. So I'll just throw some normal prismarine in here and it will give us an ETA, right? So it will show us the estimated time of completion. So it will go around in a loading bar and basically when it finishes, it goes to the green and then it will suck up all the items out of the stack and obviously use them up. And we can go ahead and we can throw some more prismarine in here and it's going to do exactly the same thing. Now, we don't just just use prismarine though you can actually use a lot of other items in this process and as you can see it's storing schematics here so it says nemo console times 130 so we can also do this with other items too so for an example prism is just an example we could also throw in emeralds as well and that will also do a pretty similar thing so we can go ahead wait for the emerald to charge and then what will happen is it will use up all the emeralds and then it will also give us more schematics so we have envoy interiors okay and nemo console interiors so it gives us schematics for different objects based on the items we input. Then we have lit over here, which is the green console to show the completion. And we can also click on view recipes here. If you have not enough items, you can basically view the recipes and it'll show us which items we need to import in order to get which schematic over here. So this is really useful as with a lot of other mods, just enough items just means that we can view all the recipes very easily. Now we can actually download all these schematics because like I said, you can store them in the Sonic Screwdriver. So just place them in here. And basically what this will do is it'll go through and it'll extract all these stored recipes or schematics straight onto the Sonic Screwdriver, right? So now there's no stored schematics here because we have them all in this Sonic Screwdriver, which is not attuned to the ship. So we should probably go ahead and do that, right? So let's take this time ship back door out, which is now finished, and let's throw in our Sonic Screwdriver and let's bind this to the ship because this is the most important gadget in this process. But after this is finished, I'm going to show you how to install schematics straight into your TARDIS, which is available to do by selecting its mode. But first you have to tune it inside this engine panel like I'm showing you now. This will take a long time though as you can see it's only 23% completed. It really depends which item you input here and the energy already generated from the batteries but for the most part if the item is more important it takes a lot longer to charge. So as you can see we've now attuned our screwdriver to our Valance Patrol Ship 3 which is just the fancy name for our TARDIS okay. So now we can use the sonic screwdriver to bind the schematics which are stored within and actually apply them onto our ship. So we basically go to the TARDIS is control and basically what we're going to do now we're going to change the mode by shift right clicking okay and we're going to set the mode of the sonic screwdriver to block interaction mode and we right click on a ship computer block inside to basically activate it right and if the computer contains a schematic a message will say downloaded data fragments for example on the hotbar otherwise no valid schematic is stored in the ship computer we can view the downloaded schematics in the sonic screwdriver by holding the left control key like i mentioned before and it also shows interactable blocks. The interactable blocks is the left control key and left shift shows the stored schematics, okay? The TARDIS will install any schematics which are stored inside the sonic screwdriver, right? So we have to go to the sonic screwdriver port of the control console to actually use this. So we'll go find the port which is here and we'll right click on it and you can see it now says unlocked interior NV exterior and now it should have basically applied any useful things inside. We still have some stored sto schematics, right? It should have basically applied anything. Basically, if you've applied something that's unlockable, it will now be in the TARDIS after doing that. And the last thing I have to do is to pull my space suit. Space helmet, space chest, space legs, space boots. And now I am a true Time Lord. Look at these gadgets, boy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this was a really clear insight on the new TARDIS mod, all of its features, how to get the mod working and running, and how to set up and get started with the mod. I tried to show all the concise information in the best way possible and i've tried to timestamp it by chapter in the video so you can go ahead and basically jump to whichever part you want which is super useful so you can actually get started and jump to the right chapter which you need help with okay so i hope this video is useful and you guys will be able to find value in it if you enjoyed this mod showcase make sure to subscribe i do have a lot of other ones on my channel on technology mods and magic mods which are really cool and fun to play with so definitely subscribe drop a comment below if you have any questions about things which i didn't answer or feature in relation to this mod in this guide and i'll try my best to get back to you and answer them and also i want to show appreciation to the member 50ap5ud 
I'm pretty sure I'm butchering that guy's name. I think it's 50 AP dude. But basically, this guy who is part of the modding team behind the new TARDIS mod, he basically sent me all the information, a full written up guide which he sent me and made for documentation on how to use the mod. And also, I managed to source the wiki as well. And I used these two in conjunction to use all the information from them to make a really good video guide for you guys. So much appreciation to him for sending me all that information because I couldn't have made the video as good without it. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next Minecraft video.